Hey everyone, I'm Brian and this is Annalisha and we're doing a little short video here for the Mazamas Cannoneering program. Uh, we're going to show you the gear that we use to cannoneer with. So first, um, we're just going to go through um, like we get dressed and we'll start, I'll start with, uh, with the wetsuits. Um, my wetsuit, this is a 5 mil. You can do a 4-3 wetsuit. Um, it depends on... I have. Yep, there she's got a 4-3. Um, it depends on how cold you get, but all the water in the Pacific Northwest is very, very cold. So I've always been comfy in a, in a, in a 5 mil. I also have um, this here. This is a, a two-piece 5 mil. Now there's some advantages and disadvantages to the two-piece. Um, the Farmer John style here, it's nice to run a canyon. It's nice and warm outside. The water's really cold. You can take the jacket off. Well, the jacket, when you put this on over top of your Farmer John, it gets very bulky and very hot. So there's pluses and minuses to the gear that you choose. In addition to that is uh, this, the top here, the jacket has a hood and I hardly ever wear the hood. So I'm not sure that I would ever buy a, a two piece wetsuit with a hood again. So that's just a little tip about the, the two piece here that I've got. And we don't recommend a Farmer John for the class because you won't be warm enough if you're wearing just a Farmer, yeah. a farmer John. This is much colder than you would think uh, when you're in a canyon air on the side of being colder than you think you're going to be. Even a 4-3 wetsuit, that's kind of like the minimum uh, thickness of wetsuit you'd want. We've had people go out in thinner wetsuits and they're pretty much shivering and uncomfortable the entire time. It's a lot easier for you to cool off and get in a pool and dump cold water into your wetsuit than it is to warm up when you're freezing cold. Yeah, that's definitely true. Um, it, it can be a 100 degree day outside and you'll be shivering, freezing cold with 10 mil on my core and you know five mil on the, my appendages and it's it's freezing the the only real way to get warm is to get out and just keep moving and you don't need to buy a brand new wetsuit if you can find um a used wetsuit at like next adventure or i think the gorge um yeah. also sometimes sells um used wetsuits we use aqua seal to uh, repair our wetsuits so they last for as long as possible um in, in terms of keeping warm, if the wetsuit you have isn't quite warm enough for you and you run cold, I run really, really cold. You can wear a thin fleece uh, shirt underneath, um, that'll help. Also, I have a, a vest that adds another couple mils um, on and a pair of shorts. Yeah, Alicia, you wear that vest under your wetsuit or you wear it over your wetsuit? I wear it over, but that's just so I can take it on and off if I get too warm. Um, and it depends on how it fits. If it fits better under your wetsuit, then you can also wear it under underneath your wetsuit. I have these shorts. Um, the other thing that we do to stay warm is wear a jacket over the top of your wetsuit. Um, you might not think that this would help keep you warm, but it actually kind of traps all the heat in. Also, you can put your hood up either under your helmet or over your helmet when you're going down a waterfall and it helps keep the water off of your head. Um, I, it also protects your wetsuit from snagging on things. I wear pants also, so I hike in in um, some oversized cheap hiking pants. And then I put my wetsuit on and I put my pants on over the top of my wetsuit so it doesn't um, snag. And it also just helps keep me warm as well. The, um, the rain jacket is key. This is a game changer. If you would have told me before canyoneering class that a rain jacket would help keep you warm in a canyon, I would have said, but I'm already wet and I'm going to be wet and I'm going to be swimming in this thing. This is no joke. You will stay 10 degrees warmer by wearing a wet jack or a rain jacket in your uh, over your wetsuit in a canyon. It also helps protect if you're in a, a windy canyon. Sometimes the breezes come up through the canyons and you're standing in the wind, so it actually blocks the wind quite a bit too. Yeah, and uh, like Alicia said, the the pants they're very thin, quick dry cheap off of Amazon. I cut these off with scissors and burned the ends with uh, with a lighter. And uh, this is my overpants. I just wear those. This is, I wear them on the approach and then take them off, put my wetsuit on, put them on over my wetsuit and I've got protection. Yeah. So uh, let's
let's go into uh, booties. Footwear, yeah. I've got uh, got my booties here. I buried them somewhere. They're right here. <laughs> They're right here. <laughs> so what I do is I always wear wool socks. I wear wool socks under under my booties. Just a set of thin, darn tough socks. And then I like uh, five mil booties. These are a Neosport. I know that uh, a lot of people were ordering some five mil as well off of uh, Canadair and USA. And they seem to be a little bit thicker than these Neosports, but those, due to supply chain issues, those, um, the, the inlay ones have been kind of hard to get, or the Zion Canadair and company have been kind of hard to get. If uh, your feet run warm, uh, NRS makes like a three, two or three mil booty. So you've got different options. I would definitely go with the thicker five mil booty for Canon Aaron. And I don't wear wool socks underneath my uh, neoprene socks because I've found for me personally, my neoprene socks fit really tight. So I wear wool underneath it actually compresses and cuts off circulation and my feet get colder and go numb. So I don't wear wool socks, but I also have boots that are insulated with neoprene so my feet stay pretty warm. If you don't have insulation in the shoes that you're wearing, a thicker uh, sock like that is good and wool will uh, insulate when it's wet so that can be helpful as long as you have space for it. Excellent. Uh, knee pads? Knee pads, yeah, put your knee pads on before you put your shoes on. Everybody makes this mistake. <laughs> so there's different kind of knee pads. Um, I like this longer mountaineering, or mountaineering, mountain bike style knee pad here. It kind of protects the bottom of my knee. Um, when you're going down a, a waterfall, uh, you know, it kind of protects here where you bang into rocks and whatnot. But, um, you know, I'm probably the only one that wears these bigger type of knee pads. Everyone else is wearing yeah. These and these are just like volleyball knee pads. You can pick, the, pick these up at any sort of sporting goods store or on Amazon. They're like $10. But as you can imagine, they don't fit very well over the top of your boots. And then you have to take your boots back off and pull these guys back on. Okay. Let's go to shoes. shoes. You've got lots of different choices of shoes. Uh, I think this is the preferred shoe of all canyoneers. Uh, these are super hard to get. Adidas makes them randomly throughout the year um, a lot of people are having a really hard time finding the the adidas hydro lace um, these are my favorite canyoneering shoe because the top of the um, the boot is um, a neoprene material and it and it pulls tight against my ankle and it keeps debris out of the shoe um, i didn't even realize it did that until i got the las cortina shoes which are great the, the traction is great. It, um, it doesn't have the neoprene upper. I get a lot of sand and gravel and pebbles and, and stuff in my shoe. I, I have to stop quite a bit and take these off, clean the shoe out. So um, it's, it's a little bit annoying, even though this is a great shoe. As a substitute for this shoe, um, it's really whatever you can find and whatever your choice is. Those are also, uh, these don't keep your feet quite as warm because they've got holes, so they let water in and out. The Hydro Lace will hold water in just like neoprene because they have a neoprene liner, so they keep your feet really warm. But they also only come, they don't come in half sizes. So some people have had trouble, they like the shoe, but they one size is too small and one size is too big. And they can feel a little bit like bricks on your feet if they're a little bit too big and some, some people don't like that. Yeah, absolutely. I'll emphasize that, that these are colder than these because of the holes and the drainage. Um, another option is, uh, this is an Italian shoe by a company called Fitwell. Um, got these off of Canineering USA. And my kid's shoes, he really likes them, even though he's never had the hydro laces. This is all mesh and these drain so your foot will be colder in this type of shoe. But it does have the zipper and the, the gaiter built in with a piece of elastic and it keeps all the, the stuff out of your shoes, the sand and the pebbles and everything else that is in a Class C Canyon. Do you wanna show your shoes? Yeah. Uh, this, is, this is the latest one. This is Adidas's latest one anyway. This is what you can buy currently on the internet when they're available. So yeah, I have the, this just a different color model year of the Hydro Laces. I really like them because I run cold, however, all these shoes are expensive and very hard to get a hold of, 
and you may or may not love canyoneering after taking this class. Um, another option is um, I have several pairs of old approach shoes. So approach shoes are pretty sticky. So you're going to be walking around in, you know, the creek beds on slippery rocks and moss. Just imagine trying to walk on snot. That's kind of what it's like. So um, an approach shoe is really good because it's still going to have some grip even in the water. Um, you can wear old hiking shoes as long as they have good tread. But I think a lot of people uh, actually like to wear the approach shoes. We wear them a lot when we go um, to Utah and run the Southwest um, Canyons. Um, I like to have an ankle support, which is why I like the Hydro Lace for hiking and walking around in creeks. So a lower top shoe isn't my preference, but when you're doing a lot more stemming and climbing moves, sometimes it's easier and you're able to get yourself into a different position. Okay, um, we'll move on to gloves. Some people like neoprene gloves. Um, I have never used neoprene gloves and I just suffer with cold hands. Um, I always go with a fingerless glove and it's just kind of what I like. Uh, I have cold hands. Sometimes I do wear neoprene. They wear down pretty quickly in different canyons. So a lot of times I'll wear a neoprene glove and then I'll just wear a fingerless like mechanic type glove over the top of them. If it's a warm day and my hands aren't cold, I'll just wear fingerless gloves because you have more dexterity when tying ropes. I also try to practice tying everything I need to know how to tie while wearing gloves. So in the moment, I'm a little bit better um, and efficient. Um, there's a couple of other styles that people like now. Um, these are another kind of type of mechanic glove. They're um, rubber. These ones are insulated with some fleece lining. They're very cheap. They're like $10, $10. but a lot of people are starting to like to wear these as well. So I haven't worn them in a canyon, but I've been wearing them for other things and I seem to like them and I feel like I have quite a bit of dexterity while wearing these. Um, some people also wear just um, like belay gloves. So this is a Edelweiss belay glove that I picked up in Utah that I like because the uh, pinky finger and the ring finger still have a finger. So it covers most of my hand. I prefer these for like uh, Southwest canyons. It protects my hands more against uh, the sandstone, so. Excellent. Um, next item, baseball hat. This is right, goes right along with uh, the game changer items uh, of the rain jacket. The, the, the baseball hat will keep um, the, the water from flowing straight into your eyes. It creates a bubble around your face where you can breathe. So the baseball hat for sure with a helmet on top. Um, one thing about the baseball hat is you pull the little button off the top so it doesn't hurt the top of your head when it smashes with your, with your helmet. Um, put your, your helmet on here. Your helmet has to be a climbing rated helmet. There's so much of a potential for a rock to come down in the waterfall and hit you on top of the head. There's been a lot of debate and conversations whether, you know, wear a whitewater rafting helmet, wear a certain helmet. You need to wear a climbing, climbing helmet with the top impact protection. And uh, on the helmet, we wear our whistle, which we signal to each other and we'll cover this in class, but um, helmet with a whistle and a baseball hat is my headgear. Uh, a good loud whistle too, <laughs> not yeah, a the train, quiet. Yeah, the train whistles are kind of hard to hear. Um, and if you have a train whistle, you'll know what it what it sounds like. But this is a, a loud, like a referee whistle at a, at a baseball or, I mean, a basketball or a football game. Mm -hmm. um, another thing for headwear, I also, I wear a baseball cap to keep the water out of my eyes. But uh, options to keep your head warm um, some people wear a neoprene hat. The problem with a neoprene hat is it can be really hard to hear if the neoprene covers your ears. They do sell some that have little holes in the, the ears that might make it easier to hear. Um, I found though that I wear this buff uh, hat that's made out of wool and it's pretty thin but it still insulates when it gets wet and I can still hear when it's covering my ears. So I'll wear this under my uh, uh, baseball cap and then with my helmet over the top of it and it seems to work fairly well. I also pull my hood up when I go down waterfalls so my head doesn't tend to get splashed and wet anyways. But like I said, if it has gotten wet, it still keeps me warmer than if I didn't have it in the first place. I think that kind of covers all the clothes so we can kind of move into gear. You started talking about gear a little bit, talking about the helmet. 
um, and the whistle. So. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll cut here, and our next video will be uh, gear.